Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel, your sanctuary for all things home, health, and style. From doing a quick tidy on your home to preparing snacks and drinks and setting the mood for a fun event, today I'll be sharing some of my best tips for effortless hosting and making the biggest impact in the least amount of time. Whether you have 5 hours or only 30 minutes to prepare for your get together, having a little bit of structure and knowing a game plan ahead of time will really help you cut down on your time and make your hosting preparation a breeze. Thanks for being here and I hope you learned something new. My first tip, and I think the thing that probably makes the biggest impact when you have people over is taking the time to do a quick tidy of your home. You definitely do not have to go and wipe down all of your baseboards or declutter all of your dresser drawers or anything like that. But by just doing a few simple things in each room, you can really get that wow factor and really give off the appearance that you have your life totally together when maybe that's not completely the case. In the bathroom, the main spots to hit are the toilet, you want to definitely get those toothpaste marks off the mirror. I know personally, whenever I walk into somebody's home and their mirrors are clean, I'm like, wow, this place is immaculate. <laughs> And then the other thing that I feel really makes a big difference, especially if you have shiny faucets, is as you clean off your counters and kind of get rid of any water or hair shavings from your husband, um, just go ahead and take a microfiber cloth or a paper towel or whatever and just like buff out any water spots so that it has a nice shine. It's going to make your bathroom sink look so clean. Moving on to the bedroom, this one is especially important if you live in an apartment setting. I know when I lived in an apartment, you actually had to walk through the master bedroom to access our bathroom. So tidying up my bedroom always made it to the top of the priority list. It's always nice to just focus on those large items like making your bed or taking all the clothes off of the chair <laughs> that you use to get dressed in the morning and putting all those back up in your closet nicely. I know just like two weekends ago, we had some friends over and I was not expecting anybody to go in my room, but then uh, one of my girlfriends and I, we ended up going in there and like looking through my closet and everything. And she's like, ooh, am I gonna catch you being disorganized? Cause I'm an organizer, you know? And luckily I had tidied up my closet just moments before. <laughs> so she didn't give me that time. <laughs> you could also clear off your nightstands and that will really make you look like you have your life together. Hi buddy. This is my cat Jupiter. I don't think you guys have met him yet. Here he is, my big fancy boy. In the living room, I always like to just kind of take a look around and um, we have a dining room table, our entryway and our living room all in the same space. So there's quite a bit to do in there, but it really only takes a few seconds. I like to fluff up the couch cushions as well as the pillows and then just fold or like intentionally toss the throw blankets to make them look nice and then clearing off any surfaces of cups or dishes or like to-do items, mail, Amazon returns, whatever. Just making sure that your surfaces are clear will make your home look so much more neat and tidy. Okay, bye. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I find that whenever I host a get together or if I go to somebody else's house for a get together, the kitchen is always the main gathering place. It's where all the action happens, where all the snacks are. And so it's really important to wipe down your counters so there's nothing sticky or anything that your guests are gonna lean on. And then if you have time, I also really highly recommend running the dishwasher. I personally don't really care for using disposable cups and napkins and plates and things if I can avoid it. So I always try to run my dishwasher before I get the party started so that way everything has time to wash, dry, and then I can even put it away. And that really cuts down on your hosting time as well as your prep time because 
once friends have been over to your home for a few times, then they don't really need to be asking you like, oh, where's the plates or where are the cups? They just know where to get it and they know that when they open the cabinets, there's going to be plenty for them to choose from. So those are the main things that I would definitely advise you to do if you're in a hurry. But if you have a little bit more time, then here's a couple things that you can do as well. If the weather's nice, I highly recommend opening up your windows. Not only is this gonna kind of cool off your house, but it's gonna allow fresh air. It's gonna get any odors that are maybe inside your house out of the house, and it's gonna get rid of that kind of stuffy feeling that a lot of houses have if they're not aired out frequently. If you have extra time, you could also just do a quick dust over all of your decorative surfaces and all of your intentional decor to make sure that it's nice and clean just in case anybody admires it they don't see a layer of dust on top now I would not recommend mopping your floors you could do a little spot clean here and there if needed especially in the kitchen but there's really no sense in doing a nice deep clean and full mop of your floors when you're going to have a bunch of people walking in and out and maybe food or drinks spilling and i found that every time i mop my floors before the party i'm like why did i waste the time doing that as i'm mopping the floors again after the party so i kind of gave up on that but i definitely would recommend doing a quick vacuum or a quick sweep especially if you have carpet once again, when I lived in my apartment, it was carpeted all the way throughout except for the kitchen and the bathroom. And I did find that if I just quickly ran the vacuum, not even really trying to clean, but more to just like fluff up the carpet, it gave the appearance that the apartment was a lot cleaner than it really was. Another thing that you could consider doing if you have a little bit of extra time is tidying up your entryway. This really is the first impression that people are gonna get of your home when they first step inside. I'll like actually come into my front door with the mentality that I'm a brand new person stepping into this home for the first time. And that kind of gives you a chance to broaden your vision and see things from a different perspective that you probably don't notice because you're just so used to coming in and out and seeing the same things all the time. Um, but if you've never tried that, I really recommend just coming in and noticing the first thing that your eyes land on and seeing if it looks nice or if it's clutter. I know I usually keep my purse and my jacket by the door, but when I have guests over, I prefer to take those things and actually store them in my closet in my bedroom, just temporarily. That way my guests have a place to store their own jackets in their own purses when they arrive. And of course, it's always preferable to have extra time on your hands, but what if you have no time on your hands and you are frantically cleaning and prepping your home before guests arrive? A really nice hack that I learned a few years ago is, a especially if you live in a home with multiple rooms, let's say you don't have time to do a little tidy on each room, just go ahead and close the doors of the rooms that you did not have a chance to clean and then open the doors for the rooms that you did have a chance to tidy. What this will do is your brain is gonna automatically assume that since the rest of your house is clean, behind those closed doors is probably clean as well. Another tip that I have for you is to prepare any food or drinks that you have in advance. Charcuterie boards, as long as you've saved the crackers and maybe some of the nuts for just before people arrive, they hold up really well in the refrigerator. You could even put it together that morning, have it spend the whole day in the refrigerator, pop it out, toss on your crackers, and boom, there you go. Another thing that I like to do in advance is just plan out my platters and the location of them on my snack table. That way it's all laid out, I don't have to think about it. And then in that kind of crunch time when guests are about to arrive and your oven timer is beeping, letting you know that your snacks are done, it's less stressful because you already have the platter ready, you already know where it's gonna go on the table. You can just walk over, grab the platter, pull your dish out of the oven, dish it up and set it back down. And it's really just a mindless task at that point. And to go along with that, just planning dishes that take very little 
effort and time to prepare is always key. This past weekend, I made a really, really easy and really delicious snack with just a little mozzarella ball, a little leaf of basil, and a cherry tomato on a toothpick. I made a bunch of those, arranged them in a circle nice and pretty on a plate, and put it on there with some balsamic vinegar and oil to dip in and boom super yummy super beautiful colorful snack that looks like it took a lot of effort but really it took me like five seconds to do another one of my signature dishes which i'll have to make a video on this but i love making bacon wrapped asparagus and that is another one that you can kind of prepare the morning of keep it in your refrigerator until an hour before guests arrive and then just pop it in and it'll be ready as soon as people start showing up. Now for me personally, Sean Luke and I, we really aren't big drinkers. Really the only time we ever have alcohol in our house is when somebody had left it from the party before. I used to get a lot of anxiety about it because I wanted people to have a good time and I wanted to get things that people liked, but because I don't drink myself really, I don't know what people like and I wouldn't know what to buy and so I would just be spending a bunch of time at the store just standing there just wasting time and stressing myself out for no reason. Now we just ask people to bring their own alcohol so that kind of takes a lot of weight off of my shoulders but as far as non-alcoholic beverages go I really like to have some sparkling water on hand. I just feel like it is so classy and so sophisticated to offer your guests like when they come in oh would you like something? a drink and they say oh water's just fine and then you say oh would you like sparkling or still right <laughs> Again, the whole point is just little tips and tricks on how to make you seem a lot more fancy, a lot more put together than you actually are. Okay, so now that your house has been cleaned and your snacks and everything are prepped, it's time to set the mood for the party. The first thing that I would suggest doing is turning off all of the big lights, all the overhead lights. Mostly we just have lamps situated all throughout our home and I'll turn those on. I find that it's really nice for setting like a more relaxing, calming mood and environment. And then when you pair that with some nice music, it just like really fosters an environment where people are comfortable and relaxed and open for more like deep conversations. So it really helps you get to know people on a better level. And I personally am not a fan of candles because they're usually made with a lot of toxic ingredients and they're super bad for your respiratory systems and even your hormones. But I recently learned that I think it's 100% like organic beeswax candles are non-toxic and they're also smokeless. I definitely need to fact check that but if that's true then that's really cool and that's a game changer because candles really do provide a nice ambiance especially around the holidays. And then of course to help set the mood putting together a spectacular playlist is always a good option. My brother, my fiance and I we actually have a joint playlist that we collaborate on. It's called Applebee's Nostalgia and <laughs> it's kind of an inside joke but basically do you guys remember the 90s or the 2000s when Applebee's was like the spot to go and they would always be playing like Michelle Branch and like the slower kind of like butt rock songs. <laughs> We created a playlist with a lot of those songs and it's amazing <laughs> and we play it all the time whenever we have people over we listen to it almost every single day and we might even play it during the cocktail hour at our wedding. <laughs> So I'll link it in the description in case you want to collaborate on it as well or play it at your next get together. Definitely when you're hosting a party, keep in mind the volume of the music too. If you're having more of like a party party, then louder music is good. But if you're more for like a casual get together where you're just kind of like socializing and getting to know people better, then definitely a lower volume is best. At this last weekend's party, I ended up feeling so bad and feeling like a terrible host because we had set up the living room, but 
nobody was really going over there and everybody it was like 10 or 12 people we literally just stood around my kitchen island the whole time and i have some stools but nobody sat down or anything and the whole time i kept thinking like oh my god why is nobody sitting down and that's one of the things about hosting that i'm actually not very good at and that is facilitating like fun <laughs> that sounds so bad Oh my gosh. <laughs> but honestly, it's true. Like I am the one to provide the snacks. I'm the one to provide the nice welcoming home environment, but I'm not the one to say like, hey, let's play a board game or hey, has anybody heard a joke lately? That is where having a co-host might really come in handy. That could be your best friend. That could be your significant other, Sean Luke. He's definitely way more fun than I am. And so he's always kind of like the life of the party. And I'm kind of like the logistics of the party. It works out really well for us. But all of that to say, what I should have done is just said to everybody, hey, should we move this over to the living room so that we can all be more comfortable? So easy. So I guess my tip would be to not be afraid to make suggestions or to facilitate the group to do things that you want them to do. So if you're hoping to have an outside party, just say, hey, everybody, like, let me show you something in the backyard and just like, make something up to show them really quick, and then boom, everybody is in the backyard. You know what I mean? The next thing to do would be to adjust the temperature of your house. I know personally, whenever I'm getting ready to have people over, I'm like running around cleaning up and cooking in the, I keep opening and closing the oven or whatever, and that can really build up body heat. But even more than that, when you get 10 to 20 people in your house, it's going to heat up really quickly with all those bodies and all those people moving around and talking. So I always like to just kind of hit my thermostat down a few degrees in preparation for that. That way nobody gets too hot and uncomfortable and neither do I. Now I mentioned before that I am not a fan of candles, but one way that you can make your home smell really good is once you've had your windows open for a while and now you've turned your AC down, you're definitely gonna wanna close those windows so that way you're not throwing dollar bills out the window along with the AC. Um, but you can also put on a simmer pot. Now, honestly, I did not know that these were called simmer pots. I was first introduced to them my sophomore year of high school, so that was uh, 2010. Um, from my neighbor during a Christmas party, but I always called it smell good soup. <laughs> but essentially what you do, my favorite combination is just orange peels and lemon peels, and you just put them on your stove in a pot of water, bring it up to a boil, and then let it simmer. I also really like doing orange peels, cinnamon, and cloves, and star anise for the winter months. And then another really great combination is limes and vanilla. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Okay, so now you're almost ready. People are about to show up. Maybe you have 30 minutes to an hour to spare. What do you do? Well, the beauty of preparing things in advance is that now you get to just kind of relax and take care of the final touches stress-free. Pop your snacks in the oven and as they're cooking, you can just sit down and relax. You can do a couple extra things if you want, like arranging flowers or setting out any holiday specific decor items. And then one thing that's super important before your guests arrive is to get yourself ready too. Take some time and head into your bathroom that you just cleaned and mess it up again a little bit. Put on a fresh outfit, run a brush through your hair, put on some lip gloss, do a little swipe of mascara, whatever you need to get yourself feeling rejuvenated, fun, and confident for when your guests arrive. And then I would say to set things like your charcuterie board and your various snacks out about 10 minutes early. People are usually five minutes early, but they're rarely 10 minutes early. 
And if I'm being honest, usually people are a little bit fashionably late. So I've found that 10 minutes is a good kind of time to start setting things out. That way, even if people arrive five minutes early, there's something for them to snack on. Well, there you have it. Those are my tips on effortless hosting and making the biggest impact in the shortest amount of time. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and let's embrace the art of slow living together, creating a wholesome life that's meaningful, beautiful, and attainable. I'm Timber and together we'll make every moment at home extraordinary.